I guess I'm just going to get right into it right now. Right into it right now. We're going to start the night off with Dan Hooker versus Claudio Puelez. I think finally we have like a decent matchup for Dan Hooker here. I feel bad for the man. He's one in four in his last five, but he's had some really tough matchup. The guy just, he just does not say no to any matchup that's, that's given to him. He says yes to every name. And during his five fight, uh, during his last five fights, I mean, he lost to Poirier in a very close back and forth fight. He got knocked out by Michael Chandler. He got, sub by Islam Makachev, and he got TKO'd by Arnold Allen. So guys who are all basically top five in their division. Uh, and this fight, he's fighting back at 155. I think that's a lot better weight class for him. He's a big dude. You know, you see him in pictures, like, with training with Israel Adesanya, and they're, like, pretty similar, surprisingly. Um, Dan Hooker's just a big dude. I do not know how he made it to 145, honestly. Uh, he's a very technical Muay Thai striker fighting at a city kickboxing. Uh, he's always fun to watch, but he's fun to watch because he gets into these crazy wars. But to win, you know, he's going to have to change that up a little bit, fight a little bit more smart. Maybe he doesn't, maybe he's like Michael Chandler where you just, he, Michael Chandler's gone on the record by saying, yeah, I don't care, win or lose. I just, my goal is to make the fight entertaining. And maybe that's Dan Hooker's same mindset too. But, you know, the that entertaining fight style is not conducive to winning and it's hard to bet on. And uh, yeah, that's that. He's taking on Claudio Puelles. He's on a five fight winning streak, five and one in the UFC. Uh, he's also fought on season three of tough Latin America. He went three and oh, and he lost the championship against Martin Bravo. And that was his one UFC loss. Uh, he's very different fight style than hooker. He's a grappler. He's a very grappling heavy approach coming from a BJJ background. He's recorded three knee bars over the course of his five fight winning streak, but really struggles on the feet. He's kind of like a sitting duck. Uh, you, if you take away his, his takedowns, like Chris Grutzmacher did in that fight, uh, you know, he's, he's a sitting duck basically. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the fight, but he fought Chris Grutzmacher. Well, as laid on top of Chris for four minutes and 30 seconds of the first round. And then in rounds two and three, Chris just stopped the takedowns and then left it on the feet. And he plus looked really bad. He did pull off a late round knee bar, but he was about to lose that fight if he didn't. So um, not a good look. Chris Gutzbacher is not the highest level of competition. You know, he's fun to watch, but, you know, um, not not that great. Uh, that being said, I think Hooker has great takedown defense like all those guys do at City Kickboxing. He's only really been subbed once. Well, he only has been subbed once in the UFC, and that was by the lightweight champ, Islam Makachev. And he's really in need of a win here, so I'm going to go with Dan Hooker in this one. You know, the odds are pretty close right now, but I, I think that he's just, you know, his back is against the wall. Who wants to be one in five in their last six? That's just not a good look. So I'm going to go with Dan Hooker in that one. All right, we're going to move right into the next one. Frankie Ed versus Chris Gutierrez. This has to be Edgar's last fight. I don't want to see this guy take any more damage than he has to. He's 41 years old. He's one in four in his last five. He's got KO'd in three of those fights. And the poor guy isn't even fighting like veterans. He's still fighting like up and coming great high level competition uh, at the Bantamweight, in the Bantamweight division. He's including Corey Sanhagen, Korean Zombie, Marlon Vera, getting finished in all those fights. He's had his moments in fights recently. He's looked great in that round one against Vera. He also had a great first round against Max Holloway. I think it was like five fights ago. Um, but he slows down tremendously, and his chin is just damaged. Chris Gutierrez is a decade younger. Rule of thumb, I always go by. Decade younger fighter wins 68% of the time. Gutierrez is a dynamic striker. He has one of like the hardest calf kicks in the bantamweight division up there, at least like it's, it's really crazy. He's six, one and one in the UFC only losing his UFC debut. Not only does he have great Muay Thai, he also has a BJJ background. Um, also a plus two striking differential at 58% accuracy and 63% striking defense. Very elusive. Um, great footwork. Edgar is better at getting the takedowns. And when Gutierrez starts to land a couple of calf kicks, you better believe that Edgar is probably going to be looking to close the distance and take the fight to the ground. But Overall, I think Edgar is just too over the hill at this point, frankly. And um, 
Yeah, I, I really do not see him winning this fight. So I'm going to go with Chris Gutierrez. And we're going to move right into the next one, which is Dustin Poirier versus Michael Chandler. Now, this one has got to be fight of the night, right? It, it, this is going to be an insane fight. Michael Chandler gets so much hate. And for the life of me, I don't really understand it. You know, he's a little cringe. Uh, I will give you that. But pound for pound, I think he's one of the most exciting guys to watch, hands down. His game plan is just to go out there, look for a KO, or get KO doing so. He's had four fights in the UFC. He's gone two and two. Three of those fights have ended by KO. All four of the fights have had a knockdown in it. And three of them have been performance of the night or fight of the night. There's nothing not, not to like about the guy. And Dustin Poirier is very similar. I just think the big difference here, Dustin Poirier is a lot smarter. He's 7-2-1 and one in his last 10 with six of those fights ending by KO. Six fights ending in a performance of the night or fight of the night. He's got great technical boxing, great footwork. This fight is going to be super fun, and I most certainly think that it ends in a KO, TKO. Honestly, I, I just don't think it's that great of a matchup for Chandler. Since this is definitely going to be a striking fight, you just have to go with Poirier. He's just the far more technical guy. Chandler's more reckless, and that's not going to work against Poirier. Um, I'm just... I, I think he's pretty much got this one. You know, you, you got to watch out. Anything could happen. Only takes one punch then to fight. And Michael Chandler has the power to do that. But I'm going to have to go with Dustin Poirier. I think I think he's uh, that's a pretty good matchup for him. So we're going to move right into the next one, which is Carlos Esparza versus Whaley Zhang. And everyone pray, please, that Carlos Esparza loses this fight. I hope she just gets the absolute shit kicked out of her. She is the ultimate human sleeping pill for any fight that she's in uh her last fight against rose infuriated i think every single person that watched it um it was just a lackluster performance from both girls no one did anything no one put themselves out there they just looked at each other from across the octagon for 25 minutes and called it a night um and that's almost how every carlos Esparza fight goes so the quicker we get her out of here the quicker we don't have to watch her on like these pay-per-views and stuff and Li zhang i think is the perfect person to beat her she's just the complete opposite She's a technical, powerful striker, um, always moves forward. Um, well, I guess Asparza does move forward too, so they're just going to end up clashing, honestly. Um, but she's also, she's not as one-sided as Asparza. She's very well-rounded. She can grapple with the best too. Um, so Whaley Zhang, please save us here. I hope everyone goes out there and bets on Whaley. We need to get Carla Asparza out of there. And frankly, she's not that good. She's old. You know, her game is just holds you up against the fence and you know, make sure no one strikes. Just people are afraid that she's going to grapple with them so they don't open up, and it's and it sucks. Um, but Whaley Zhang, you know, I hope she teaches her a lesson in that one. So I'm going to go Whaley Zhang, and we're going to move right into the main event, Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira. I feel like this storyline has been just driven into the ground, honestly, but I'll just give a brief, you know, background. Uh, Pereira is two out of Izzy's five pro kickboxing losses where he went 75 and five. One of those fights was by decision. Clearly Pereira win. And the other one Pereira was losing until uh, he caught Izzy with a brutal KO in the third round. Um, since then he has a six and one pro MMA record. Uh, he's three and zero in the UFC already fighting for a belt. I don't think that's unheard of. I just think the only person that can beat that stat would be Brock Lesnar. It's really unheard of when people make a big statement like that and end up fighting three fights in their UFC career. Um, and he's just run through all of his UFC competition so far, made light work of Sean Strickland in his last time out, just made Strickland look like he didn't belong. And uh, he's, explosive he's an insane athlete and i think the power is the biggest part of his game and also he cuts a lot of weight to make 185 Izzy doesn't cut any you know so when they stand next to each other alex Pereira is a lot bigger uh noticeably bigger and they're both six four with an 80 inch reach so it's kind of weird adesanya um he's looked nearly perfect over his eight fight middleweight championship reign and people have started to criticize him me included because you know he's found like a blueprint for winning and it's not the most exciting way, but it works. And, you know, you can't really blame the guy for doing it. But, it, you know, he doesn't get the most finishes that way. And he just kind of point fights his way to a decision. And it's, you know, lately it's been kind of boring. Uh, that being said, I don't think that blueprint for winning is a good idea for this matchup. Because standing and striking, 
you know, with Alex Pereira, he he would know too, you know, for three rounds, five rounds, this is going to be five rounds, is playing with dynamite. Um, he's just so powerful that it doesn't matter. You know, he needs one punch to end this fight. Uh, so I think everyone sees where I'm going with this one. I like Pereira. I will say I'm not the biggest fan of Izzy. Maybe I'm somewhat skewed against him. Um, I know a lot of Izzy fans also say, like, Pereira already lost to some scrub, and you know, he lost to some guy. But he wasn't – he's actually a pretty good fighter. Uh, Quaylen Antoni, something along those lines. You know, he, he was actually – he's a pretty good guy, and he went out there and he grappled with Pereira. He didn't – Pereira didn't know what to do. And people forget that the concept of, you know, stylistic matchups. And this is going to be a striker's paradise in this. So, you know, that line of thinking just doesn't work for this one. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Pereira here. You know, I'm not overly confident. You know, it's going to be a hell of a hell of a fight. But, um, yeah, I, I like him in this. And uh, that's it. UFC 281, Madison Square Garden in the books. I'll be posting in another couple of days, guys. So, uh yeah, I'll get this out as soon as possible and get the prelims up maybe by midway through next week. Or this week, rather. Whatever the fuck. All right, I'm out of here.